In this video, we're going to take a look at solving exponential and logarithmic equations. When we're dealing with exponential and logarithmic equations, it's just a tiny bit different. We have to somehow get it so that those variables are down and out of the exponent. Or, if we're dealing with a logarithm like these second two, we need to somehow separate that variable from the logarithm. And we're going to see how we do that. So let's take a look at this first one here. And for this first one, as we look at it, um, one of our methods that we can use is to write using the same base. If we can get both these bases to be the same, we can set the exponent part to be equal. Well, let's see, 6 and 36. Hmm. Well, 36 I know is 6 squared. So let me rewrite it as that. So I'll have 6 squared and that's to the x plus 2 power and that's equal to 6 to the 4x power. Okay, now we have a little bit of a mess over here but we can take care of it. Remember when we have a power to a power what do we do with those exponents? we multiply them. So we have to multiply and we get 6 to the 2x plus 4 power. Now be careful, remember that we need to multiply this 2 by each piece there so we have that. Then that's equal to 6 to the 4x power. Now we have the same base so what I can do is go ahead and set those exponents equal to each other. So I'm going to take that over here and we'll have 2x plus 4 is equal to 4x. Alright, now hopefully this is very comfortable and something that you're, you're used to working with. We want to get the x's by, the, by itself, so we get them all together first. So let's get all the x's over to the right here. Subtract 2x. We have 4 equals 2x and finally divide by 2 on both sides and we're left with 2 equals x. Now we can always check our answer here. If we take that 2 put it back in here it would be x plus 2 which would be 2 plus 2 so 36 to the fourth power and it says that's equal to 6 to the well 4 times 2 is 8 6 to the eighth power. Let's just check that. Let's grab our calculator and see if that's true. So 36 to the 4th power, 36 to the 4th power, which is equal to a big number there, about 1.6 million. Then we take 6 to the 8th power, and sure enough, it's equal to the same thing. So it does indeed work. All right, let's take a look at this next one. And over here, <clears throat> well, our first strategy was to write them using the same base. Can I make it so that both of these have the same base? Well, I can't make 50 into 5 to some power, so no, I can't. So then we need to bring in some logarithms. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the logarithm of each side. So I'm just going to tack those on right here. We're going to take the log of this, and we're going to take the log of the 50. So then what I can do, remember if we have a logarithm and there's a power on this, we can take that and pull it out front. So that gives me, and I'm going to put it in parentheses here, 5x minus 6 times the log of 5. On the right hand side we have the log of 50. Okay, well now we want to get that x by itself. Since it's out of the exponent we can now just work and, and get rid of it. So get rid of the other things that are with it. So I'm going to start by dividing by the log of 5 on both sides. Divide by the log of 5. Then that leaves me with 5x minus 6 over here. And on this side I have the log of 50 over the log of 5. Okay, then I'm going to add 6 to both sides. And since I'm kind of running out of room here, 
this is gone, so I just have 5x here. So then I'm going to divide by 5 on both sides to get that x by itself. So I'm going to take this whole thing and I'm going to divide it by 5. So I'm going to write it out here like this, dividing by 5. Now, I need to grab my calculator and figure out exactly what those logs are. So I have the log of 50 over the log of 5. Well, those aren't nice logs, so I have to use my calculator. So the log of 50, this calculator I have to type in 50 and then hit the log. So I'm going to write those up here. So we have 1.69897. We'll take a few decimals. This is kind of a reasonable number of decimals here. So 1.69897. Then I'm going to find the log of 5. So 5 log, that's 69897. So 0.69897. Then I need to go plus 6 and divide by 5. So plus 6, and then this whole thing is going to be divided by 5. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's grab our calculator again. We're going to take 1.69897. And divide it by 0.69897. And that gives us that. Then we're going to add 6. Got a little messy there, but that's adding, remember. So plus 6. Then divide it by 5. And we end up with approximately 1.686. So this one is approximately... 1.686 if we round it to the thousandths place. Okay, so for that one, we had to take the log of each side so we could get that x piece out of the exponent and then we could work with it. All right, let's take a look at another one here. Down on the lower left, in this case, we've already taken the log or there's the log of this side and I've got that power sitting there. I can pull that 7 out front and I have 7 times the log base 2 of x and that's equal to 21. Okay, now this is just multiplication between these two. So I'm going to go ahead and divide by 7 on both sides. Then bring down what I have left. So I have the log base 2 of x equals 3. Okay, now I have to get that x out of the log somehow. Well, a way that I can do that is to use 2 as a base. So I'm going to use this part as the exponent, and I'm going to use 2 as the base. You say, well, where on earth did you get that 2 from? Right here. That was the base of my log. Because then what happens, and I'm going to rewrite the whole thing so it's clear, I have 2 to the power log base 2 of x and that's going to be equal to 2 to the third power. So we kind of did the opposite of what we did up here. Remember where we got the same base and then looked at the exponents? Here we're taking some exponents and we're setting them equal to something with the same base. Why did we do that? Well, right here we have inverse operations. This part's going to be gone and we're left with just x because when we raise that log base 2 to that power then it's gone so we have just x here and 2 to the third power is just 8 so that one we end up with 8 alright then let's go over here and take a look at this last one sometimes we can do some simplification before we start messing around with the logarithms and in this case we have two logarithms with the same base that are being added well how do we deal with those if we remember from our properties of logarithms what we're gonna do when two logs are being added with the same base is we're gonna multiply those numbers right there so it's gonna give me the log of 4x it's gonna be equal to one. Okay, now 
I can do a similar thing to what I did in that last problem. Remember that when there's no base written, it's base 10. So I'm going to raise, I'm going to have 10 as the base and both of these pieces as the power. So I'm not going to rewrite the whole thing this time, but it's going to be 10 to this power over here. And I'm going to do the same thing on the right, 10 to the first power. This log stuff and the 10 cancels out, and I'm left with just 4x. And that's equal to 10 to the first power. Well, 10 times itself is just 10, 110. So we have 10, then finally divide by 4 to get my x all by itself. So x equals 5 over 2, or 2.5. All right, so solving exponential and logarithmic equations. One strategy that we can use is to get the same base. If we can do that, like in this first one, we set the power equal to each other, and then we can solve for that variable. Sometimes we'll have to take the log of each side if we can't get that having the same base. That's fine, we can do that. And then here we end up doing some estimating with our calculator, some rounding and coming up with a, an answer that's close, but obviously we've done some rounding. Then in these others, remember also that we can take, if we have a log, that's the piece is going to a power, we can pull that out front and then work with that. Also, remember that we can sometimes do some simplification. Like here, when we have two logs being added together, do that first, then do whatever you got to do to get rid of that log and free the variable so that we can find it. I hope that was helpful. Keep working hard on your math. Good luck.